I'm working on a lot these days. You know, I'm I'm making a lot of lifestyle and uh, mindset improvements. What was that? Hello, dearly beloved. It has reached the witching hour of this Tuesday night, and that is the 20 minutes or so it takes me to get ready for bed every night. I had the distinct pleasure of accompanying one of my oldest friends to their cousin's wedding this past weekend, and traveling with people is interesting, because you get to witness what their little routine is. And like, we would get home, and it's the same with my sister. We would get home from a day of activities, and she would just crash in bed without like brushing her teeth or like washing her face, doing any sort of like nighttime regimen. And I would just be sitting there lamenting like, oh, I don't want to get ready for bed. And both of them are like, uh, then don't just like go to sleep. And I'm like, I can't, like, I can't. Like, I don't know if anyone's like this, but like at this point in my, my big age, I've been doing my nighttime routine for so long that like I, cannot rest if I don't do it to the point where like I will revenge bedtime procrastinate for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours instead of just doing the 20 minute routine and going to sleep. Like if I just followed their lifestyle, I would just be in bed and I would skip it and I would do it the next morning. But like the thing is that would really disrupt the flow and pace of my life. Like I have to do it now. But I was also reflecting with her about like how much it helps me because when you're in a transitionary phase in your life, when you're traveling, when you're in a new environment, when you're just like out of your comfort zone and out of your like, you know, your home base, there's already so much shifting that like even just having a 20 minute thing that you do before you go to bed and a 20 minute thing that you do when you wake up can be so grounding and it helps me like literally just approach life like it helps me just exist without feeling like some sort of dissociative state if you will like if i physically do not have my retainer in my mouth as i'm laying there in bed i will have to get up and put it in like i i can only count like one two maybe three nights over the past like several years that i have fallen asleep without my retainer in my mouth and believe me, like, I wish I could. I wish I could be a little more laissez-faire and just plop into bed and, like, be able to wake up in the morning and feel totally fine. But, like, this past year has really proven to me that, like, I am a little, I'm a little bitch for structure. I've always known that about myself. I've always known that I love structure. And I would prefer someone sets that structure up for me instead of me having to do it myself because I'm not very good at it. And having my work be so routine really did help me because I didn't have to critically think much. I didn't have to use much of that. I would just roll out of bed, run to the bus, get on the bus, do my makeup on the bus, listen to music, get off the bus, walk to work, get in the office, get my little breakfast, go like, it was set in front of me. And then when that obviously evaporated last year, it took me probably like, I don't know, a full year because I was depressed and maybe I was depressed because I lost 13. I don't know. But it took me a full year to like reinstate some sort of routine in the absence of like a structural, like top down routine. I'm now just fully reaping the rewards of like setting that up for myself because I don't know that I would have had as to me it's been a smooth transition to Seattle. I know on these vlogs I capture the the doubts and the worries and the insecurities but overall overwhelmingly it has been remarkably smooth. Um, it's not even that my routine is like very elaborate. I've seen some 19 step regimens before. I'm a low maintenance gal. I'm wearing a flannel. Like I may love structure, but I'm pretty laissez-faire when it comes to like what actually belongs in the routine. It could be two things and that's a routine to me. I set expectations very manageable for me. I'm outing myself as a curology girly. A lot of you have been aware of my skin journey. I would say I'm like 
on the way to almost like skin neutrality now like i don't even want to have to see my skin as beautiful in order to be okay with it like sometimes acne can be painful but just having a little bit of you know these are healing these are flat they're on their way these will just fade over time this is a little active guy i think that's okay like i'm getting to the point where i'm like i don't i just want something common sense straightforward reliable doesn't make me jump through too many hoops but at the same time like i know it's sound and i personally don't enjoy researching skincare i know that it's a lot of girlies pride and joy to discover new products and incorporate new things and try new serums but like for me it's not my passion it's not what i enjoy spending my time doing and that's why curology has just withstood the test of time in my routine i've been using curology for years now they initially sent me a free product which got me on it that got me in the door and then i have not left the building since like i've just been paying for my own curology account since then because it's just no nonsense good skincare that doesn't irritate my skin the cleanser amazing like i've never used a cleanser that's come close to this it's so gentle things i used before used to like burn around my eyes like even my makeup wipes irritate me a little bit i wish curology had makeup wipes maybe soon but like the cleanser so gentle i use it at night i use it at, in the morning too and obviously like the hallmark product of curology is the actual acne you know medication so you can see like you fill out what you want what goals you have for me like it's mostly acne and also i've switched out my medication multiple times when my um, needs have shifted like sometimes i want to work more on redness curology is the sponsor of today's video it's probably one of the most organic placements i've ever done because this is just genuinely what I use every single night, every single morning. I would be using it whether they sponsored me or not. Like I'm a ride or die, I have been. So I'm glad it finally worked out to work together because I just trust Curology. I trust them. If we're talking routines, Curology has been there. It's there right now. It will continue. I have no plans to change. It'll continue to be there. Like it is a part of my medicine cabinet family now. They all sit up there together. They're having fun. What the hell? If any of that resonated with you and you'd like to give them a shot, I will have my link below to try out Curology. You get the first month free. Thanks to my people over at Curology who were very down to have me just speak very openly and candidly about my experience with no parameters. Because this series has no parameters. You can't cap this. You can't limit it. You can't box it in. I'll be saying whatever. I will be saying whatever on these videos. Okay, bye. Something I've been meditating a lot about as I adjust my new lifestyle here and establish new routines and new patterns and new habits and just new ways of being um, is like the definition of what like taking care of myself means for me because this literally comes up in like almost all my friendships. I feel like everyone is at an age where what you may have thought was self-care years later you're like ah that actually like didn't really add to my life that detracted and I thought it was generative but it was just like a really shitty band-aid that when you took it off the wound was still there and like tonight like typically the habit I would have been in when lived at my parents house like it's 12 30 on a on a um it's a Thursday night but I have the day off of work tomorrow so technically it's my weekend now um if I were in Palo Alto right now, like, I'm watching Hacks on HBO. I'm, like, giving it a second shot because first time I watched it, I was like, this is good. But I never, like, sunk into it. It took me until, I think, episode four. And now I'm like, oh, I could watch a few more of these. Like, this is hitting right now. It's just filling me with good, you know, chemicals. I should just stay up a little later and, like, have some more fun. And, like, tomorrow will come. And, like, I don't have a, a wake-up call. But on the other hand, I'm like... No, I, I could do that, but like binging is like binging anything for me is really dangerous. I don't really have an addictive personality. I am really, really 
careful. I think I talked a little bit about substances in my last video or two videos back, depending on how I edit these. I'm really careful with substances. Like, I don't really have any, like, bad relationships there. I can't even tolerate caffeine. So, like, I'm a baby. Um, but sugar, TV, those are things that I will binge. And it feels good in the moment. And then you look back on it and you're like, wow, I feel shitty. Like, that did not help anything, even though in the moment, it, feel, it feels like it's filling your cup, but then you wake up the next day and you're like, where'd all the water go? It's not at the cup anymore. Again, with the fucking bad metaphors, like, God. To, to send this little reflection home. Hey, mirror. I've made some updates to my bedroom as well. I have this. I should really be giving you more housing updates and like interior, like apartment updates, because I feel like that's what people actually search for in moving content. But for me, all of the, all of the updates are happening right up here, right up there, as well as around here. You know, there actually is some exciting developments. Anyway, a couple of, couple of realizations I've had about my self-care. I'm not sure if these resonate with any of you, but honestly would love to know, like, if anyone else is sorting through this. Um, but basically a lot of time, this is so small, but it literally the, just this mindset has helped me so much, but like there'll be a lot of little things that just kind of sort of create a little negative notch during the day. Like, like if I'm walking around my apartment and I see like I've left a grouse ass pair of socks on the ground or I still have not taken the trash out for the third day in a row. Me a year ago would have just been like, oh, it's a fleeting moment of just like, oh, don't like that. That's fine. I can take 10 seconds of looking at something and being like, I don't like that. But what I've learned is that the sense of accomplishment, and here's what I'm getting to in this little clip, the sense of accomplishment I get from just writing that, being in right relationship <laughs> with my apartment and myself by like, literally taking care of those little things that just add up. Like they really do collectively make an impact. Like, because if you're seeing those things day in, day out and things are not aligned with like the way you want them to, why the fuck do I have so many gnats in my apartment? Yeah, I just noticed that like, once I take care of those things, I get such a lovely sense of accomplishment and a sort of like, ah, oh, I'm so glad I did that. And Kalel, y'all, is anybody watching Kalel? Cause me and a couple of my girlies have been Kalel viewers and um, Kalel is making content again. Kalel comes in and out of the YouTube sphere. Kalel is back in and she is living at her parents' house in her basement. And she's on this, she's on this vulnerability train with us. So if you want to click through some more vulnerability content, I've already name dropped Purple Palace enough. I've name dropped... My girl, Anna Russet, Kalel is next up on the list. We're creating a union. We should create a union. Any YouTubers want to unionize? The second I say that, I'm sure YouTube will just suppress the shit out of this and I will be um, shadow banned. But anyway, she was saying that like when she's putting off like dishes, laundry, chores, what she will do when she actually does them is out loud say to herself, ah, oh, that felt so good. That just felt so good to get done. Because then the next time she sees that obstacle in her way, she's going to be like, oh, but remember how good it felt to do that last time? And that helps encourage you to take care of yourself and to take care of those things that you're putting off and putting off and putting off. Um, and so lately, instead of just kind of being like, yeah, my kitchen's fucked up. I'm just going to go to bed and take care of it tomorrow. I'm like, no. That little bit of weight on me that I'm not doing something that I should be doing is heavy enough, is has just enough weight that I'm like, it's worth taking care of that for me tomorrow. And I don't necessarily articulate exactly what that feeling is or enough examples of like ways that I take care of that. But in this case here, like, although past Kath would have just clicked the fuck through and probably finished the season, I'm like, I know that's going to set me off tomorrow. And I value my mood, like, and my mental health so much that I'm like, it is worth just at least giving myself the chance for tomorrow to be good.
And now, honestly, by saving these hacks episodes, I have something to look forward to tomorrow. I have a reason to be excited to wake up in the morning. <laughs> no, that reason's well butrin, folks. All right, good night. This is like the fourth fucking time I've worn this shirt in a vlog. And I only feel self-conscious about it because canonically part of the, the descriptor of being a lifestyle girly is the aspirational endless amount of new clothes. And in fact, I used to, when I would film a main channel video, literally look at my past thumbnails to make sure I wasn't wearing a top that you all had seen recently. As if I can even remember what I wore yesterday. It's not like you guys are clocking what I'm wearing in every video, are you? And even if you were, we should be celebrating people that have a capsule wardrobe that just rotate through shit. Like kudos to me for finding a great, beautiful blue t-shirt from Alaska that reminds me of a great time this summer. Sorry if I'm gonna wear it and be comfy on a Monday on my couch. I'm not mad at you all, I'm just like, mad at the expectations of society that we're just cycling through shit. Anyway, I came on here to just discuss with you all and share as we all, well, not all, but a few of us are going through a little bit of a life transition right now and moving to a new city. And one of the simplest comforts, simplest pleasures, simplest feelings of um, attachment to a place. I actually just finished reading a book on... Um, loving where you live and like place like the theory the science the art of like place attachment and how people develop such strong bonds to cities i think i actually want to do a whole video like more of a sit down analysis type video about moving like maybe not analysis but like tips advice like more of structured content but one thing i'm noticing is how crucial it is to reestablish your go-to dependable takeout spots. When I was living in San Francisco, since I had been exposed to San Francisco so long before I lived there, because I grew up in the Bay Area and I worked there a few years before I lived in the city proper, da 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 I basically already known the kinds of places in Knob Hill where I lived where like I wanted to get takeout from. It was, if any of you are still in SF, it was Thai Spice on Polk Street. Please pay my visit. They make extremely good Thai food and I don't think they get enough credit because there's too many bougie Thai places in SF that get all the clout. That place, I loved Bob's Donuts. I loved Pancho Villa in the mission. Um, I had a go-to sushi place in my hometown. Just like I had my little go. There's something nice about like getting to a point every few weeks where you're like, oh, I haven't had that takeout place in a while. It's just nice that I'm starting to get into a routine where I have steady spots that feel familiar to me when I want to get takeout and I, I know the taste that I'm going to be eating instead of trying something new every single time. Like, God bless trying something new. There are 3,000 restaurants in my neighborhood I need to try and every day I discover a new beautiful restaurant that happens to be plant-based and I'm like, <laughs> we're winning here. Um, but you all know, it's just, that's, to me, that's one of the stages of moving some places. Like you got places that got you. That's what I want to say. I've been waiting for the bus stop. Can I share with you? I keep wondering to myself, you know, how can I be so attached to this place, but not a place like Los Angeles or New York, which like a lot of people love. Like, why do I like this place more? And I think it comes down to like what you consider a high quality of life. Like for me, high quality of life looks like walking to the grocery store and seeing the mountains and being able to walk around the lake and being able to bike and have a beautiful bike path near me and to have just nature all around to have a walkable neighborhood but maybe to someone else it's having access to 23 nightclubs or rooftop bars or I don't know having skyscrapers all around you is what brings you joy like that doesn't bring me joy it's very interesting. It's just very interesting to me. And figuring out like what those things are for me is, it, I just think that's an important exercise to start to evaluate what does quality of life mean to you? Cause it, it's a different goalpost for every single person. It's not like one metric, even though a lot of reports try to make you believe that quality of life is defined by these very like rigid things. It's totally up to you. So yeah, 
All right, here's my bus. See y'all later. We are in Vancouver and quite honestly, don't understand why the entire world's population doesn't live here because it is the most beautiful. Here's what I'll say. Everybody that lives in Utah always defends it by saying, hey, I can go hiking after work. I'm like 15 minutes from the mountain. Well, Vancouver, you have an actual beautiful city with a cool culture. And literally there's like six, like outstanding, like 2000 reviews on all trails, like five star hikes within like 23 minute drive. It's insanity. Not even in Seattle can you get that. This is just, does anyone want to hook it up with a visa? Anybody, please. Let's talk a little bit about siblings. I have one and I just got off a two week stint of housing her for a little bit as she's going through it, as I'm sure many of us are. And um, I feel like people on this channel are always a little bit surprised that I have a sister because I just don't speak about her very much. I don't feature her very much. And it's because for a long time, my sister and I were kind of distant. Ultimately, if I had to pin it to anything, it would be our relationship as roommates that actually poisoned our relationship as sisters, which like, let's talk about it. The number of friendships I've seen decay over the past two years after folks lived together, a little scary. Did it influence me wanting to live alone? Certainly, because like, I have seen like besties get to the point where they cannot even speak to each other after living together. Like friendships you would never expect to end just splintered. Like there is something about sharing space with somebody, even if they're family, it can just create so much resentment and drive up tensions to a point where you just cannot even repair what the damage has been done. And I was never sure that I could, honestly, with my sister. Like, there was a lot, there was a lot of trust issues. I just felt like I wasn't getting the respect as a roommate and it, she was just hard to live with. Like, I've always jokingly said that my, my sister is the worst roommate I've ever had. And so I feel like when we stopped living together, I kind of saw her as my ex roommate more than my sister, just because it, it was, it was tough. Like it was just a tough spot. We went to college separately, didn't really see each other, even though she was at Santa Barbara and I was in LA. Like I saw her maybe a couple of times. Like we just weren't friends, but we were sisters. Like when we came home for winter break, when we would go on vacation, like we were, we were sisters. Like we would always get along. We would cackle, we would laugh, we would crack up, we would share good times. Like it was always really jovial, but I never felt like I could spend like extended periods of time with her or that we really had like a so solid foundation of friendship. We were like, we were like sisters. We weren't roommates anymore. We weren't friends anymore. We were just sisters. I don't know if this is relatable whatsoever, but like I always, while we were a little bit more distant in college, I would ask people like, if you met your sibling on the street and they weren't your sibling, like if you met them at like a housewarming party or you met them like at a friend's birthday dinner, would you be friends with them? And honestly, about 50% of the time that I ask that, people say no, very adamantly. Like people know that if they did not grow up with that person and they were not their family, that they probably would not be friends with that person, which is wild. But like, I personally think that that's super healthy to just express that. Like, I know that my cousins are like wildly different and it's very good and healthy and great to have friendships with people very different from you. But there is something to be said for the fact that like, not all relationships have to have this like perfect ending point. I felt a lot of sort of like guilt and shame over like my relationship with my sister not being that like clinically amazing sisterhood that you're just besties and you're each other's maid of honor. Like I never felt like we had that as sort of adults. And that's why Fleabag was just like the most validating show because that was our relationship. Like, and in some ways it still is like, I am very much Claire and she's very much Fleabag. And like, just the way they interact, I was like, finally a fucking show that like represents sisterhood in all of its nuance and like layers because female friendship is fucking complicated. Sisterhood is a whole other bag. Like I was just so, indebted to Phoebe Waller-Bridge for showing me that like, oh, 
this exists because I always would look at my friends and their sisters and be jealous that they were like besties but even then when I would talk to them they'd be like oh no we like a lot of the year are not on great terms it's just hard it's just hard to maintain relationships so anyway we were very squarely just sisters for a while these past two weeks I just went into it with an open mind just supporting my sister in her time of need like just gonna give her some shelter and some love and as much encouragement as I can and it was super super restorative and great and um she ended up being a fantastic roommate and I like really valued having her around because without asking she would you know make the bed when she got up in the morning and she would do the dishes and take the recycling out and break down boxes and like organize things just was so thoughtful like just had a completely different capacity for being my roommate and my sister than she did in high school like people really do change and I was glad to give her that sort of like second chance at like what could living together be like because it could be nice to like a little bungalow in Seattle and like get a two bedroom with her if we can afford that and like vibe together. I'm borrowing her car to pick my friend up from the airport today and she was like, do you want to get lunch as like a celebratory thing because I got my car fixed finally? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, like this feels like we're friends. Like I think the friendship layer is like reforming on top of like the sisterhood and like temporary roommates ship and it's just so beautiful to see relationships transform like that and especially after moving away from my parents. I keep reflecting on how helpful it's been to take the roommate layer out of my relationship with my parents because so much of our conversation and the things that we would relate about would be like, hey, can you do this chore? Or hey, can you stop playing music so loud? Or hey, can you be home to pick up the groceries at this time? Hey, can you... And so uh, it wasn't like our relationship could really progress because it was so stuck in just sort of like the logistical functional aspect of being roommates. But now, like I've talked about a little bit in these vlogs, just called my mom last night to talk about which charging cable to use for the vacuum that I have because it was misplaced for a while and they, and they found it. And I was like, oh, okay, it's a logistical question. She'll probably hang up after this. But we had more to talk about because we don't, have that just very rigid like roommate um landscape you know interfering so yeah all this is to say i'm just very pleasantly surprised about the direction of my sisterhood and i'm very appreciative because i think it would be nice to be besties with my sister i'm not holding myself to that if it's not realistic for me but I would like to be closer with her. Being in the same city, but not being roommates, I think has given us that opportunity. But now I can see that maybe even as roommates, we might even still have that opportunity. So just feeling very reassured that living here has done actual, counterintuitively has done positive things for my relationships with my family who I used to live in the same household as, so.